Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be swapping out my second generation Masso controller for this new Masso G3 Touch controller. I won this Masso G3 Touch controller for the Masso Makers Showcase for the month of August. And I'll be sure and put a link down below so you can find out how to enter and get a chance at winning one of these yourself. Let me open this thing up a little bit and let's take a look at it. Uh, you can see that these are very similar. Uh, this is the, obviously the G3, which is much newer. This one here is about eight years old, but you can see the basic design has pretty much stayed the same. There's a few subtle differences. And of course the biggest difference is I won't need this VGA cable that's going around here to uh, on the front side of this, uh, I have a uh, monitor, and then I also have, so I've got that kind of coiled up and plugged in there. And then, of course, I also have this cable, which is the power cable to the, uh, that goes to, plug, to power the monitor. Uh, then I also have, uh, since my monitor, even though it's a touchscreen monitor, it wasn't compatible with this one. So I had a Bluetooth uh, keyboard uh, with a, you know, the mouse pad set up. You can see here in this picture. Uh, so I had the Bluetooth uh, thing here for the keyboard. Uh, so I won't be needing that because this one has a touchscreen monitor already built in. Uh, the other thing I won't need is this is just an extension cable that goes to the USB and this one has the USB already set up right there as well as on the front there's an e-stop and you can see I have an e-stop wired in here so that will be one thing I don't need. Now I've already been setting this one up in fact it won't set flat because I've already mounted my a uh, little monitor mount plate on the back of here. But if I open this up again to show you the insides, you can see that I've already been doing a little work in here. I've 3D printed some things to make it make this whole swap uh, go really easy. Uh, I had a spare uh, DB25 breakout board that's exactly like that one. So I used it to create this. Um, little 3D printed plate, if you will, and it just bolts to the existing uh, uh, PIM studs that were there. I think they were like M3 standoffs. Uh, and then I also, they have four more on this side, and I also used uh, a 3D printed a plate where I could mount this uh, eight terminal uh, block here. Now, I won't be using these. I'll be swapping these over and moving them to this, but I wanted to be able to go ahead and get it laid out, get the screw holes all done. These were 3D printed 100% infill so that I could uh, easily tap them with a tap. And then the other big difference you'll notice, if I turn this around, you'll see there's like a big cutout here uh, with uh, two holes on, on top and bottom. And what I've done is I've created a split plate here. And this, again, is just 3D printed. Uh, and you'll notice I only have one hole here. And the reason for that is this is going to be such a clean installation. That's one of the things I really like about the Masso is by using this DB25 breakout board, this will be the only cable I'll need coming in here. So there won't be any other wires because everything is powered. I run my 24 volts. I have a 24 volt power supply in my other controller box hanging on the side of the machine. I'll show you that here in a little bit, but that's 24 volts coming in here. And then I've got a terminal block here and then I've got it using it to power the Masso here. And there will be a, a couple of fewer wires because like I said earlier, I won't need this uh, e-stop here or this won't be here. So it's gonna be a much, much cleaner installation. Although even with this older G2, there's really only 
three cables hanging around here. Uh, you know, this again is the VGA cable. This is the DB25 cable, which will still be there. And then this is the power cable going to the monitor. So that won't be there. This won't be there. It'll be just this one wire, which is really awesome to just have such a clean install on this thing. And if you ever go to your buddy's garage and they have a, I'm not going to mention names, but uh, this, there's a couple of CNC's out there that use the Maso G3 Touch controller. And they always have this big blob of wires uh, where they're bringing everything up there to that. And there's really no need for that. Maso makes a really cool wiring module, which is uh, basically something similar to this. Uh, and it makes it a clean install where all you need is that one cable coming through to the Maso G, uh, G3 Touch. So just think of this DB25 breakout board and this cable as the poor man's wiring module. <laughs> That's uh, basically does the same thing. So first thing I'm going to do, I've already uh, taken my phone and taken pictures of all the different screens to settings just in case something goes wrong. I want kind of a backup thing with pictures because I'm terrible at remembering what I had things set for. And I've also taken a notepad and made a cheat sheet because I'm not going to be disconnecting any of these wires. I'm just going to be disconnecting them here, but I want to be able to remember where all these go. So I've, I've got a cheat sheet where I have the, the pin number of the DB25 board, and then I say where it goes on the Maso controller itself. So should be a pretty simple, quick, and easy install. And if I have time at the end of the video, if anybody's interested, I'll kind of do a walk around of my machine. This is a machine I built uh, within the last, I don't know, three or four months. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe that might give somebody some ideas on how to how to do some different things if they're uh, into the DIY mood and, and building their own machine. So anyway, let me uh, get the camera situated here and we'll start. Uh, unhooking wires here and, and taking off the stuff we don't need. I'm also, I mentioned the, uh, I've already got this plate on here. This is a really cheap uh, monitor mount thing I bought from Amazon. Never really been too happy with it. It's, it's a little lightweight for what it's holding up here. And I think this might be a little bit lighter than what all of that is. So I'm going to try to use the same mount but I'm only going to use, instead of, you, you can see it's got two pieces that, you know, swivel out and all that. I think what I'm going to do is take just this shorter piece and put it here and eliminate this long piece because I really don't need it to hinge and all that because when I swing it out, it does stick pretty far out. And I want to keep it a little closer so I'm not bumping into it when I walk by it. So, but anyway, let's get started and we'll start taking this apart. Okay, I've got the Masso all wired up. I went ahead and put a couple of the shipping bolts back in here just to keep this closed. I'm still not sure I like this. This is a little wobbly. And I have 3D printed. You know, this is made to uh, swivel, so I don't know. That's, that's just really too flimsy of a bracket. It's got too much play in it. 
So I'll probably put the 3D printed, I made a solid bracket that just keeps this at an angle of 15 degrees. And I'm going to try this for now, but uh, I may come back and swap that out. But anyway, it's all wired up. Uh, I tried to get some video of that. And a lot of it I could tell you weren't going to be able to see nothing but the back of my hand. So I just shut the camera off and finished it and got it hung back up here. So we're going to try firing it up for the first time, see if we let the magic smoke out or hopefully this thing will work. So let's, uh, let's power it up and see what happens. All right, looks like we're getting nothing here. So I'm going to have to go back and check, see if I left a wire or something. I don't think I did, but it should get all the power it needs and everything coming from that one cable. So we'll go shut it off and go back and take a look and come back. Okay, we're back. And what was just a couple of seconds for you has actually been two days for me. Uh, in the last clip, uh, we were trying to start this up for the first time, and I was getting no power whatsoever. I, well, I take that back. I was getting power, but the screen would not boot up at all. It wouldn't do anything. The screen stayed blank, and then when I opened this up, the green LED right here would just stay flashing. Now, it's supposed to flash for a few seconds as it boots up and then once it boots up it will be a solid green uh, so but i found out what the problem was and it was with this power supply i was using um, this power supply worked fantastic with the g2 masso controller that i was using previously but apparently it does not have enough oomph for this thing uh, this is one of those uh, little small power supplies that depending on how you wire it, it can get 5 volts, 12 volts, or 24 volts. And I had it for 24 volts. Like I said, it worked fine with the G2 Masso, but it wasn't doing anything here. And, and when I checked the voltage, I would get anywhere from 23.5 to 24.5 or something like that. But it was never really steady. It was kind of fluctuating around. Uh, so when I saw that this only puts out one amp, I looked on the website and see that you need one and a half amps. So I thought, okay, well, that's the problem. I can't use this. So I found another 24 volt power supply that I had in my stash over there. Uh, I'll put a picture here to show that. Uh, and it would put out up to five amps. So I thought, okay, this should, this should fix it. So I connected that one up and I still got the same thing. It would, when you power it on, it would just have the green light flashing. And if I measured the voltage up there, it would be, like I said, somewhere between 23 and a half or so to maybe 24 and a half. So I contacted uh, tech support and I was emailing back and forth. Just happened to be my buddy Peter Pasuelo uh, from CNC Nuts. He's part of the awesome Masso support team. And he had me check a few things with my meter and the voltage and stuff. And we were kind of both scratching our heads. And then I found this old AC, uh, AC DC adapter uh, that I'm showing right here. And you can see that it puts out 24 volts and up to 5 amps. Well, I decided to let me check it with my meter. And when I checked it, and I'm showing you a clip of that right here, you can see that it's dead solid on 24 volts. No fluctuations at all. So I thought, well, let me try that. And I connected it up uh, to the Masso, powered the thing up, and boom shakalaka everything powered up and worked fine. So that's where we're at. I have gone ahead and uh, I haven't closed this up yet, but I've gone ahead and got all my connections here. I've removed that uh, 
little terminal block there. Turns out I'm not going to use that at all uh, because since I'm using this uh, little power brick or AC adapter, whatever you want to call it, uh, I'm going to keep it up here near the controller and use it just to control this so that there's no, it's not, you know, jumping around from 23 to 25 and all that. Uh, the main reason I kept thinking I was okay is because when I looked, again, when I looked on the Maso website, it says that you need 24 volts. It can be no less than 23, no more than 25. And I thought, well, mine's jumping around, but it's staying within that range. So it should be good. But turns out that the G3 apparently prefers a nice, constant, stable voltage. So that's what this uh, AC adapter is going to give it. So we are now ready to power this thing up. And uh, let me move the camera in a little closer so you can see the screen. And when I power it up, I've got a tap on it like I was doing before, and it should load the, uh, the load screen to, to load the firmware. Okay, so it, now you can see it brought up the screen. It uh, says the USB flash drive is not put in there, and I've got it right here with the um, latest firmware on it, 5.11. Okay, so there, the thumb drive is in there. Okay, and you can see it's bringing up the latest firmware, and that's what I want. So I click enter. And now it's going to load that firmware. And then as soon as it's done, I'll hit escape. Okay, I think that's going to do it for this video. It's starting to get kind of long. If anybody has any questions about anything I did, because I, I know I probably didn't show everything just real clear, but if you've got any questions about something, just be sure and put them down in the chat, um, and I'll uh, definitely get back with you. Um, I want to thank Masso again for uh, selecting me as their winner for the August uh, Masso Maker Showcase. Uh, again, I'll put a link down in the description showing how you can enter to get a chance to win one of these. Um, I probably would have bought one of these anyway, but it's certainly nice to, uh, to get a free one uh, from them in a contest like that. So thank you very much, Masso. Big shout out to Peter Pasuelo for uh, helping me troubleshoot this thing and like I said, I was worried that something was maybe wrong with this. And as it turns out, there was nothing wrong with the Maso at all. It was all just a uh, power supply that wasn't uh, sufficient to, uh, to work with this. But uh, as you can see, I've been uh, kind of test driving it around and everything. Everything is working exactly like it was with the Maso 2. I couldn't be happier. And... Uh, can't wait to get some more projects. Probably be doing some more inlay cutting boards soon. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all very much for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.